Hi, welcome back to Glaze Watermelon. Would you like to have an all-in-one retro emulation USB drive that you can take anywhere with you? Well, you're in the right place. In this episode, we will teach you how to make a USB gaming drive using Batocera Linux. This is a very cool project that can serve as a portable retro gaming solution that works on any compatible PC. We want to thank the influx of new subscribers to our channel, and we really hope that you enjoy the content. We're aiming for 1,000 subscribers by the end of the summer, so please help us by liking and subscribing. On to the episode. Batocera Linux is a free open source operating system designed for retro gaming. It transforms any PC, Raspberry Pi, or compatible hardware into a powerful emulation device. Batocera supports over 50 classic gaming consoles including NES, SNES, PS1, N64, Dreamcast, and more. Not only that, but it also features an easy-to-use interface, built-in game scrapers, shader effects, Bluetooth controller support, and the ability to fully customize the experience. It also supports multiple controllers, including Xbox and PlayStation, and allows for easy ROM management and customization. Battlesera is a full operating system, which means that we will have to boot from the USB drive, which can be tricky sometimes. The good news is it does not modify your base operating system, so everything happens within the USB drive. Cool fact, Battlesera is named after an insect genus of beetle. To build your retro gaming USB stick, you will need USB 3.0 stick, 16 gigabyte minimum, 64 gigabyte or larger game libraries, a PC that allows booting from a USB, Battle Sarah OS, Belena Etcher for flashing the image. We're going to do this in three easy steps. Number one, install Batocera on your USB stick. Number two, configure Batocera and set up your games. And number three, we're going to go over some tips and tricks. Batocera can be downloaded from batocera.org. As of this video, the latest version is number 41. Click the download button and select the first option, the one for desktop PC, laptop, Nook, and Intel-based Apple computers. This is a big download at 3.3 gigabytes, so it might take a while depending on your download speeds. There is also the option of a torrent file, which can be a quicker download sometimes. The other application we need is Balena Etcher, or your favorite image flashing software. We like Balena Etcher because of simplicity. You can get it by visiting etcher.balena.io, clicking on the download button, and choosing the version appropriate for your operating system. Links for all of the things we mentioned will be in the description down below. Insert the USB stick you want to use. Open Balena Etcher, select the option Flash from File, and select the Batocera image. Next, click on the Select Target and choose the USB stick. Finally, press the Flash button and let it do its thing. We can now go ahead and boot from the USB. The process to boot from the USB depends on your PC. You need to press a specific key to access the boot menu, which allows you to choose your USB stick as the boot device. On screen, we have a list of the most common keys you need to press depending on the manufacturer. If you have secure boot enabled like we did on our laptop, you have to enroll a certificate from the Batocera USB stick that will then allow you to boot. Once booted, you are greeted by the one and only emulation station. The first thing we always like to do is disable the front end music. The second thing we like to do is enable internet connectivity. This will help with transferring files to the USB. Go into main menu, network settings, enable Wi-Fi. Choose your appropriate access point from the list and enter the password. Batocera is compatible with a wide range of controllers from the latest 8-bit do to the Google Stadia and everything in between. You can pair the device via Bluetooth if your device supports it or connect it directly with a USB cable. To map the controller buttons to your liking, go into main menu, controller settings, controller mapping, and press and hold any button to enter the configuration screen. From there, just map the buttons to the corresponding buttons on the controller we use the select button as our hotkey button, but you can use another one if you like. To connect to the network share from Windows, type backslash backslash Batocera backslash share in the file explorer address bar to access the share folder on the USB stick. We tried transferring files directly from our RetroBat USB drive and for some reason it was super slow. If you need to do this type of file transfer, just use the built-in file manager by pressing F1 on your keyboard. Once connected, transfer the necessary BIOS files and games. Unfortunately, most BIOS files are proprietary, so we cannot tell you where to find them, but if you look really hard, you might find a BIOS pack archive somewhere on the internet. Once you get your BIOS files, place them in the BIOS folder. Next, 
Place your games or ROMs in the corresponding folder for each console or arcade system. Anytime you add a game, you can press the start button, game setting, update game list to refresh your game listings without restarting the system. As always, we recommend curating your collection, picking and choosing games that you know and love and will definitely play in the long run. Once your games are installed, it's time to add artwork and media. Bring up the main menu, Scraper, Scraper Settings, then scroll down to enter your screen scraper.fr username and password. Return to the Scraper screen and choose Scrape Now and download artwork and media for your games. To customize the emulation station theme, go into main menu, updates, and downloads. From here, you can download new themes and bezels. We recommend the CKAU book theme, which gives a scrolling carousel of all your cool titles. And that's it. You now have an awesome portable gaming OS that you can take anywhere. Batocera capabilities are tied to your PC. So a high-end PC will be able to emulate more advanced systems. So plan accordingly. Make sure to add games that can run on both high-end and low-end systems. So that way, you can play on either type of system. A quality USB stick goes a long way. So use one from a known vendor like SanDisk or Samsung with USB 3.0 or higher. We chose a USB stick in this instance because we wanted something small and portable. We really like having an entire gaming OS that we can take anywhere. This is a really cool project and we hope that you enjoyed creating one for yourself too. That's all for today. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. We love when you guys comment. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. Shout out to our awesome son who made this little picture for us on Mario Day. Bye!